Welcome class of 2024. This is Mrs. Ankrum, your school counselor. I know we just started second semester of your sophomore year, but believe it or not, we need to start thinking about classes for your junior year. The junior year is a pivotal one. Hopefully, now that you've been at BHS for two years, you've settled in and hit your stride. You should have some insight as to the subject areas you excel in and the classes that offer more of a challenge to you. During your junior and senior years, you really want to focus on challenging yourself academically, but not take on more than you can realistically handle. Your goal is to end high school with a strong transcript and a well-rounded educational resume. This will offer you the most options for your post-secondary plans. This video presentation will hopefully provide you with valuable information about the process and how to select the classes that will not only meet your graduation requirements, but will also be the most appropriate for your success as a junior. So let's take a look at the registration timeline so you know what to expect and be prepared to meet all your deadlines. We'll start with today, January 19th. We're meeting with all students during study hall to review registration information and pass out your registration forms. As you can see, these forms already have teacher recommendations for core classes included. Students with no study hall will meet in the BPAC during 5A. After watching this video, we'll have time for questions and answers. On January 21st, you should plan to discuss teacher recommendations if necessary. If you're not in agreement or don't understand why a recommendation was made, please ask to speak with your teacher either before or after class or during your 5A enrichment period. We will also be hosting a POGS meeting on this evening to provide your parents an opportunity to view the video and ask any questions they might have. On January 22nd and 23rd, you should plan to enter your courses from home via Skyward. Instructions for entering courses into Skyward are provided on the next slide. It's very important that you enter all recommended core courses, even if you don't agree with the recommendation. You also need to select additional elective classes to fill your schedule with at least six classes. This will leave you with the study hall period. If you're choosing to not have a study hall, you will need to select seven classes. Make sure to include at least three alternative classes that you would be interested in taking in case your first choices are not available. Classes are scheduled according to how many students sign up for them and we can't guarantee that a class you request will be included in next year's schedule. On January 24th, you'll need to return your completed registration form to your first period teacher. Make sure that you have signed it and that you've discussed your schedule with a parent and have them sign the form indicating their approval. This is an example of the registration form that everyone should have received. You'll notice that you have received recommendations for English, Math, Science, and Social Studies. You should also see that your Social Studies course is some level of U.S. History. This is a graduation requirement and is typically taken during the junior year. In addition to your class choices, we have also included some important information on this form. Please notice under the Bruin, there is a statement regarding recommendation overrides. There is a highlighted statement about next year's deadline for schedule changes, and at the bottom of the page to the left is an explanation of both the Tennessee Hope and Promise scholarships. And then to the right at the bottom is a list of graduation requirements for you to refer to as you're choosing your courses. As I said earlier, over the weekend of January 22nd and 23rd, you will be responsible for entering your course selections in Skyward. Here is a video explaining how to do this. It is recommended that you use a computer to complete your course requests. Course requests are not available in the Skyward mobile app. To begin selecting courses, students will log into their Skyward Student Access accounts. Course requests cannot be made using a Parent Family Access account. Once you are logged in, choose Schedule from the left-hand menu. 
Next, locate Course Requests Now Open on the right-hand side and choose the link for Request Courses. You will now be on the Course Requests page. On the left side, you will see Available Courses and on the right side, you will see Selected Courses. You will also see a search box at the bottom of the page. Use the search box to locate a course. For example, enter ENG into the search box to see all of the English courses that are available. Once you locate the course that you need, select that course by clicking on it, then choose the Add Course button located between the two columns. Your chosen course will now be listed in the Selected Courses area. Please note that the F and S that you will see beside the course names stand for Fall and Spring. For year-long courses, make sure that both classes are showing in the Selected Courses box. If you accidentally add a course you don't want, highlight it in the Selected Courses column and choose Remove Course. Continue this process until all courses appear in the Selected Courses column. If your school has enabled Course Alternate Requests, you can utilize that feature by choosing the link for View Alternates near the top of the page. Verify that the number of scheduled courses and credits meet the guidelines provided by your administrator. Here is a cheat sheet that should help you find some of your courses. You can typically search for the first two or three letters of a course to find what you are looking for. Before choosing your classes, let's go ahead and review your graduation requirements. In order to receive a diploma, you must meet specific requirements. They include four credits of English, four credits of math, and please note that math must be taken each year of high school. So those of you who took a high school math while still in middle school could end up with either a total of five or six math credits. You must earn three credits of science and you must take biology and either chemistry or physics and then at least one additional lab science course. Students need to have three credits of social studies, including world history, US history, and a half credit of government and a half credit of economics. You also need two foreign language credits and they must be two years of the same language, one credit of fine arts, one credit of lifetime wellness, a half credit of PE, and a half credit of personal finance. Now students playing a sport or participating in band or ROTC can waive their PE requirement. To do so, you must submit a PE waiver form, which can be found on the county website. And then finally, you must take a minimum of three credits in a focus area, which brings you to a total of 22 credits. All high schools in Williamson County offer a variety of focus areas. The following are areas that Brentwood High offers. TV and film production, business management, information technology, entrepreneurship, humanities and fine arts, AP, and STEM. Hopefully all of you are currently in one of your focus area classes this year and perhaps you already took one your freshman year. This puts you in great position to take your third focus class as a junior and complete that graduation requirement. If this is not the case, and you have not taken any focus classes or have changed your focus area, we'll need to specifically address this as you may have to double up on these credits either next year or as a senior. Let's take a look at a typical junior class schedule. You'll all be taking English 3 at some level. You'll also be taking a math course as well as a third science class. These courses will depend on where you are in each class progression. All juniors will be taking some level of U.S. history. 
And then your final two class choices should include additional graduation requirements for a total of six credits. This will leave one period for your study hall. Now, some of you may choose to forego a study hall to add a seventh class to your schedule. This is fine as long as you're certain that you can commit to the extra work. Options for additional graduation requirements could include a semester of personal finance, a semester of PE, or a full year of fine art. Or if you haven't taken your first year of foreign language, you would definitely want to include this in your schedule as you're going to need two years. If you've already earned your two years of language, you could choose to go beyond that requirement and get your third or fourth year, or perhaps even decide to take a different language. And then finally, make sure not to forget about those focus area classes. Let's go ahead and check out the various course offerings that you have to choose from. If you turn your registration sheet over, you'll see a complete list of all of the course offerings. On the left-hand side of the page, you'll see English options, the math classes, science choices, and social studies courses. In the middle of the page, we have all of our different foreign languages, as well as the fine art options and PE classes. And then to the right are all of the classes that fall under the various focus areas we offer. These include humanities and fine arts, TV and film production, business management, entrepreneurship, information technology, STEM, and AP. Now at the bottom right of the page, you'll see a key which explains some of the course designations. These include courses that can be considered a humanity or fine art, even though it's not included in that grouping, as well as courses that are considered dual enrollment, dual credit, or industry certified. You'll also notice that beside each class is a suggested grade level for that class. We do encourage this recommendation, but in some cases it can vary. And this should be a conversation that we have together if you're considering one of those classes outside of your grade level. Here's a list of the Williamson County online courses that are being offered for next year. This list is provided for those of you who plan to remain students at Brentwood High. You must attend at least three traditional classes in our building, but then you can take up the three online courses. This is a tentative list pending enrollment and teacher availability. Remember, online courses are not for everyone. If you're wondering what it takes to be successful with an online course, go ahead and click on the link, which will offer a video that describes what it takes to be successful in an online format. Please remember, Students need to apply for and receive permission from the district before taking any online course. If you're interested in these classes, please see me and I can provide you the link. Now let's review Williamson County grading policies. You should be aware by now that there's a significant difference between standard, honors, and AP courses. Let's review those differences here. When taking an honors course, students will have three percentage points added to their numerical grade each semester. They will also earn 0.5 quality points to the numerical value of the letter grade received. So for example, a student earning a 92% A in an honors course would receive the three points, bringing their A up to a 95%. They would also receive 4.5 quality points instead of the standard 4.0 for an A. With both AP and dual credit courses, students receive five percentage points added to their numerical grade, and in addition, will earn one full quality point to the letter grade received. An example of this would be if the student receives an 80% C in an AP or dual credit class, they would receive the five points, which would bring them up to an 85% B. This would then give them four quality points instead of the 3.5 for honors or 3.0 for standard. Please note that for the second semester of AP or dual credit classes, students must sit for either the national AP exam 
or the challenge exam to earn the additional percentage points onto their grade. Dual enrollment classes are available only to juniors and seniors, so next year they will be an option for you. And they do continue to be recorded as pass-fail. If you decide to take a Williamson County online course, a letter grade will be recorded to your transcript. Now, if you opt to take an outside vendor online class, it will be recorded as pass-fail. The outside vendor that Williamson County uses is Apex. Families do need to pay for these classes and they are NCAA approved. But please remember, again, that you must request permission from the district before taking any online course. On this next slide, we have included a visual which might help you to understand what I was referring to in the previous slide. This chart demonstrates the difference between the regular or standard class, the honors class, and the AP or dual credit courses. You can see if you were to receive an A in a standard class, you would receive four quality points. In the honors, that A would give you 4.5 points. And if it was an AP or dual credit class, you would receive five quality points. Hopefully this chart gives you a clear visual on how the different levels of courses can impact your GPA. Another thing I want to talk about with this slide is the HOPE Scholarship Grading Scale. Because school districts in the state have various grading scales, the state wanted to create a uniform grading scale for their scholarship program. They came up with the scale that is at the top of this page. As you can see, it is different from the Williamson County Grading Scale. This is why you will always see two different GPAs on your transcript. So for instance, if you received a 91% A in a class, you would receive an A from Williamson County and receive four quality points. But with the state grading scale, you would be given a B and receive three quality points. The state also does not include honors, AP, or dual credit weighting. But they do not take away the bonus percentage points that are awarded at each semester for these classes. Now that you have been given some information about the impact on grading that the different level courses have, how are you to decide which level is right for you? There are multiple things to consider. First, let's talk about teacher recommendations. These are critically important. Your teachers see you in class every day. They know your academic strengths and weaknesses. More importantly, they know about your level of commitment to the class. Do you turn in your assignments on time? Are you focused on the lesson or are you regularly distracted? Do you actively participate in class? Do you work well in a team setting? Do you self-advocate when you need help? All of these things are just as important for your success in a class as your level of intelligence. Teachers also know what the expectations will be for next year's classes. By putting this information all together, they have a very solid idea of whether you can be successful in an honors or AP course. Please take these recommendations very seriously. Now, if you don't agree or don't understand a recommendation, have a conversation with that teacher. Another item to consider is standardized test results. Many of you took the PSAT this year. Take a good look at your results. The score report that you got gives you important information about your level of competence in each course area. It even suggests which AP courses that you would probably do well in based on your scores. Now, another very telling piece of information is your pre previous grades from ninth and 10th grade. If you're consistently receiving A's and B's, you're probably ready to jump to a higher level of course and consider taking that at an AP level or an honors level if you were in standard. Now, if you're getting C's or lower, you should probably stay at the current level of your coursework. Other things to consider that can't be seen on any report are your personal goals and level of motivation. Also, your organizational and time management skills. 
And what about extracurricular activities? If you're active in multiple sports and involved in several clubs, your ability to spend the three to five hours each night on honors or AP homework just might not be realistic. Please remember, just because you get recommended for five AP classes doesn't mean that you have to take five AP classes. Unfortunately, during first semester this year, I spent a lot of time talking with students and parents about not being successful in an honors or AP class. I had to make a lot of schedule changes from honors to standard. As you're making decisions about the classes that you wanna take next year, Please be honest with yourself and realistic about your ability, your time, and your motivation. I want each of you to always challenge yourself to reach your potential, but not create a situation that sets you up for failure. There are a variety of diploma types and distinctions that a student can earn. Some of these diplomas require students to take certain classes or do specific things. So I wanna go over them with you now. Williamson County offers two types of honors diplomas. There is the Williamson County Honors Diploma, which requires students to complete the core curriculum and earn a minimum of 14 credits at the honors or AP level. Students also need to include a fourth year of science and earn at least a 3.5 GPA. Any credits that students have earned at the middle school level will be counted as honors. Now, in order to earn the Tennessee Diploma with honors, students need to score at or above the subject area of readiness benchmarks on the ACT. Currently, those benchmarks are English 18, Math 22, Reading 22, and Science 23. In addition, there are two diplomas with distinction. The Tennessee Diploma with Distinction recognizes students that earn at least a B or a 3.0 average and have completed at least one of the following. Earn a nationally recognized industry certification, participate in at least one of the governor's schools, participate in one of the state's all state musical organizations, be selected as a national merit finalist or semifinalist, attain a score of a 31 or higher composite score on the ACT, attain a score of three or higher on at least two AP exams, or earn 12 or more semester hours of transcripted post-secondary credit. The work ethic distinction can be received by earning a minimum of 20 points out of 40 points on the industry developed employability standards as well as earning the regular high school diploma. One final type of diploma is the volunteerism diploma. This diploma is earned by completing at least 10 hours of volunteer work each semester that you are enrolled in a Tennessee public high school. The basic guidelines include that you cannot be paid for this work and you cannot do volunteer work for a family member. Students are responsible for tracking their hours and submitting them through our volunteer commendation form, which can be found on the link shown on this slide. Since we're talking about diplomas and graduation, let's review the guidelines for valedictorian and salutatorian. When you review your transcript, you will see both a weighted GPA, which is calculated by Williamson County and used to report to colleges, and then also your unweighted GPA, which is used for the Tennessee Hope Scholarship. Please note that Williamson County no longer ranks students numerically. On our graduation program each year, we indicate next to each graduate's name whether they have achieved summa cum laude, magna cum laude, or cum laude. In the middle of this slide, you can see the GPA required for each distinction. For valedictorian and salutatorian selection, the following criteria is used. Students must qualify for summa cum laude. They must sit for an AP exam for every AP course they take, and they must achieve at least a three on 75% of those exams. Students also need to participate in at least 20 hours of service above the community service hours required to earn the volunteerism diploma. 
And in the event that multiple students have met this criteria, the student with the highest ACT composite will be selected. Finally, let's talk about what goals you should focus on during your junior year. Your junior year is a busy one. You want to continue to explore your personal and career interests and your post-secondary options. This is a difficult task to do, especially if you have no idea what you want to do after high school. Start by thinking about what you're naturally good at. What classes interest you or come easily to you? What type of environment do you feel the most comfortable in? Remember, you'll be working for at least 30 years of your life. You want to make sure you're happy, satisfied, and successful with the profession you select. If you decide to continue your education, you really want to step up your research on various colleges or trade schools that you might be interested in attending. The best way to do this is to actually visit different school campuses. This is going to be your home away from home for at least four years, so you want to make sure it's the right fit for you. When on campus, try to check out the dorms, the student union, the bookstore, rec center, and definitely try to sit in on a class or two. Most of these things can be accomplished by participating in a campus tour. There are so many things to consider when thinking about which college to attend. What are the admission requirements and can you meet them? How much will it cost to attend? What types of scholarship opportunities do they offer? And how about location? Do you want to be close to home or on the other side of the country? Do you want to be in the middle of a big city or in a more in a relaxed country setting? And what size school are you looking for? A huge college where you might find yourself in a lecture hall with 400 other students? Or are you looking for something smaller where the professor might actually know your name? Obviously, you would want to consider what program of study you're thinking about pursuing. And do they offer that particular major? This can be really overwhelming and you probably won't be able to visit all the campuses that you're interested in. To help with this, check out some of the College Search websites. They offer a wealth of information about individual schools. A great one to look at is collegedata.com. By the end of your junior year, try to have your choices narrowed down to at least 10 schools. During this process, if you need help or are unable to find certain information, stop by to see me and we can look at it together. It's also important to have a healthy balance in life. You want to continue to be involved in both school and community. Join a sport or a club that you're interested in. Take the opportunity to show your leadership skills by holding an office within that club or by being a captain of your sport. Challenge yourself academically, but also participate in extracurriculars. This allows you to meet other students who share your interests. It's also a good way to find opportunities for community service and that's a great way to be able to build your educational resume. Don't forget to continue to log in those community service hours, especially if you're working towards your volunteerism diploma. Always make sure to focus on doing your very best every day. Start your year off strong, set goals for yourself and meet them. Attend enrichment when you need to and always communicate with your teachers. Don't let yourself get behind assignments or projects you know it's so hard to catch up when this happens. Finally, and most importantly, make sure you're communicating and self-advocating for yourself. Everyone needs help at different times in their life. We are all here to help and support you as you make your way through high school. Let us know how we can best do that for you. I wanna thank you for your attention. I hope this video offered some valuable information and can help you to get through registration. Please let me know if you have any questions or need help. I hope you have a great rest of your day, class of 2024.